Good morning, Chem 20s. Our lesson today is on polyprotic substances. Well, a monoprotic acid, represented HA, are acids that have only one acidic hydrogen atom. They can react only once with water to produce hydronium ions. Examples of this would be HCl, HNO3, and CH3COOH. When first looking at acetic acid, you would think that it could donate more than one proton. However, if you think about how it is built, you will realize that there is just the one hydrogen that can be donated that contains acidic properties. Let's take a look at a general example of HA and move from there. So if I take the example HA, and what I'm going to say with this general acid is, let's pretend in this example that this is a strong acid. So this could be HCl, HNO3, HBr, HI, any of our five out of six strong acids right there. So we're going to add this to water. And we already know it's going to want to donate a proton. Now, because this is a strong acid, it's going to have a quantitative arrow. Greater than 99% of it will want to go to products. And so we're going to make hydronium ion. And of course, what we're going to have left is A minus. Because if you think about this, H positive, A minus made a neutral HA. So when I give away the H positive, I'm still left with A minus. Again, this is called a monoprotic acid because my acid only has one proton to donate. I use a quantitative arrow because I told you when we started, pretend this is a strong acid. If this was a weak acid, monoprotic acid, we used, would have used an equilibrium arrow with less than 50% written above it. Well, what I would like you to do is, can you do both these examples? Can you take hydrochloric acid and write out the chemical equations for this reaction when it dissolves in water? And then again, when you are done that, take acetic acid and add it to water and write out the equation. So HCl is a strong acid. So when I add it to water, it's going to greater than 99% want to donate this proton. And I like showing it. I think it helps clear up in your mind what we're doing. It's going to make one hydronium ion and Cl minus. I'd like to remind us that your reaction will balance at this step. So all we did was move an H from here to here. So I know I have three H's on both sides, one O on both sides, and one Cl. The important part is making sure it still balances the charge. One positive, one negative, no charge, no charge, no charge, no charge. So it does balance. So monoprotic acid because it could only donate one proton. Same thing down here for acetic acid. But with acetic acid, I want you to again always think about how it's built. Remember, it's the cation and ion. So acetate ion does not have acid properties. It's not going to donate. This is the only hydrogen that can donate its proton. So therefore, that's the item that's giving away one proton that makes this monoprotic. Now, the difference is because this is a weak acid, because it is below the hydronium ion on your acid chart, we're going to use an equilibrium arrow, and we're going to write less than 50% above it because that's the rules for weak acids stated in a previous video. We're still going to make hydronium ion and, of course, CH3COO minus acetate ion. Again, always balancing. One mark for each of these. This is a perfect definition of monoprotic acids. Now, it doesn't have to be monoprotic acids. Sometimes there are more 
acidic hydrogen atoms that an acid is able to donate. Therefore, the acid can react more than once with water to produce hydronium ions. Examples of this would be sulfuric acid, phosphoric acid, and then of course H2C6H6O6 as well. If we take a look at this, again, I want to do this with a general formula to start. So I'm going to start with my general acid H2A. So this acid is very similar to sulfuric acid. Because of that, let's assume that this acid again is strong. Now we only have one strong polyprotic acid. If you check your chart, all of the other five strong acids are monoprotic. Sulfuric acid is the only strong acid that is polyprotic, or actually what we will add into Chem 30 is when you can only donate two protons, we actually will call you diprotic. When you can donate two or more, we call you polyprotic. So it's kind of like an overlapping category. So again, I'm going to add this to water. It's going to, my acid is going to donate a proton. And here's the trick to this. Acids can only donate one proton at a time. So we can only donate one proton right now. And so again, since it's a strong acid, we're going to use a quantitative arrow, meaning greater than 99%. So we are going to make hydronium ion and HA minus. Remind ourselves that when it gave away an H, it became only HA. And when it gave away a positive, it left us with only one negative. Now, right now in the bucket, we have hydronium ions floating around and HA minus floating around. But remember, we also will have water floating around. And so our question is, which one of these guys will react with water and donate another proton? And that's going to be this guy. He also is an acid. Now, if you check your acid chart, although this is a made up example, let's pretend this is sulfuric acid. He's the only strong acid. Therefore, this acid, when you check the chart, is going to be a weak acid. Because as we go down the chart, remember it goes from strongest to weakest. So we're dropping down, so it's gonna get weaker. And so we're gonna now, for the second reaction, use a less than 50% arrow because when he donates his proton, it's not going to occur as readily. So again, we're going to make hydronium ions and we're going to have this time A2 minus. So it lost its hydrogen, another positive. So this makes this one more negative. Again, it's going to balance at all stages. Two minus plus one positive is one minus on the right, one minus on the left. This would be out of two marks. This is polyprotic because it donates more than one proton. At the end, if you wanted to, I guess you could draw a line and add these reactions together. Um, and then we would see that we would have two hydronium ions. I recognize what type of acid it is based on how many hydronium ions it made at the end or how many waters it reacted to for reactants. So it reacted with two waters. I know it went... It donated two protons. It made two hydroniums. I know it donated two protons in the beginning. So this is a diprotic acid, or more specifically, a polyprotic acid. Well, why don't you take a second and try sulfuric acid following the rules and donating as many protons as it is able to donate? So I have H2SO4. Again, I'm going to add that to water. I looked this up. I know sulfuric acid is a strong acid. Therefore, when it donates its proton, it's going to do so really readily, greater than 99%. So we're going to make hydronium ion. And when we give away 1H, we're going to still be left with H. SO4. It was neutral, so positive, negative. So when I give away a positive, it's still going to have a negative charge. 
positive and negative, no charge, no charge. Again, floating around in the bucket, along with even more water, we're gonna have these two ions now floating around. This hydrogen sulfate ion is going to be able to donate another proton. And I know that because if you check your acid chart, you will see that HSO4 minus actually will show up here in your list of acids. So this ion is also an acid and can donate a proton. However, you'll notice that it's significantly lower on the chart. Therefore, it's now a weak acid. And so we're now going to go to products, have a percent yield less than 50%. We're still going to make some hydroniums. And we're still going to make SO4, right? It gave away an H, so it's SO4. It gave away a positive. It already was negative, so it's going to be now 2 negative. If this is what you did, congratulations. Third example, I would like you to try phosphoric acid. Find it on your chart. See if you can figure out how many stages, reactions it's going to go through and write me all the reactions, please. Pause the video and then unpause to check your work. So phosphoric acid is H3PO4. It's going to be present in water. When I take a look at phosphoric acid, we know it's going to be able to donate one proton. And we also know by looking it up that this guy is a weak acid. So we'll donate a proton. So we'll become hydronium ion. And when H3PO4 loses a hydrogen, it becomes H2PO4. It was neutral, so when it gives away a positive, it's now negative. Again, it looks like we could donate another proton. So I look on my acid chart. This guy is on there just a little bit lower. He is an acid, so we're going to write him down. H2PO4 minus... Still more water floating around in the bucket. You'll notice that we went from a weak acid to an even weaker acid. So this is going to be an equilibrium arrow again. It's going to donate a proton. So we're going to make hydronium ion. And we're going to lose another H. So it's now going to become HPO4. It was minus. We give away another positive. Now it's going to be two minus we make hydrogen phosphate ion. Again, it looks like we have another hydrogen, another proton that can be donated. So I'm gonna carry this down. HPO4 two minus plus water again, more water floating around. Again, it's a weak acid. So we would think equilibrium arrow donates a proton. And again, let's just check our work at the end. Three minus plus one, two minus on the right, two minus on the left, three H's, three H's, one plus four is five O's, four plus one is five O's, one P, one P, it all perfectly balances and should at every step. Now, the thing about this one is if you check your solubility chart and you put your fingers on all three of these acids, this is our one special case in all of chemistry. This is the one you have to be aware of. This is the one I expect you to know. When talking about phosphoric acid, or if we were to do the reverse of this, when talking about the base phosphate ion, this is a special case. Meaning, because this was an weak acid, when it first donated, we know that it has a percent yield less than 50%. So less than 50% of the time it wants to make these products. However, we do have some, so they're floating around in the bucket and they're going to react with more water. 
But now as we go down, this acid now got even weaker than the phosphoric acid was. And what I will tell you the percentages is, yes, it's less than 50%, but actually for this guy to react with water, it's actually less than 1% of the time. But it's still going to have a little bit of a reaction and we're still going to make these products. Now, if I look in my chart again, when I go to find this acid, you will notice that this is the weakest acid on your chart. The only thing weaker than this acid on your chart is water. And we would say that water isn't even an acid. Now, we're going to tweak our definition of an acid yet again when we get to Chem 30. So for right now, let's just say this is the weakest acid on your chart. Well, ideally, this acid should be able to donate a proton to water and make new products. Sure, it won't happen very often, but it still should be able to happen. Well, what we will find is when this reaction goes that we will have approximately 0% of this acid will react with water. So what we will see is that this reaction won't occur at all. In this special case of phosphoric acid, the reaction will only go through two donations, not a third. In every other acid we give you, assume it will donate as many times as it's supposed to, given the number of acidic protons, but this is a special case. I never want you to see, to see you write me this third reaction. Think of it like this. Pretend we're playing baseball, and we've been playing a long time. We throw away a hydrogen proton to the water. And we're exhausted, but we were able to throw it away about, ooh, just under 50% of the time. We then get down here and we again throw away the proton. Oh, we're exhausted though. We are so, so tired. And so when we throw it away, we only make the throw less than 1% of the time. Well, by the time we get down here, my acid is so weak, not only do I not have the energy to throw the ball, but I can't throw the ball. I can't even lift my arm. I, as an acid, right? Because it takes energy to break this bond in order to transfer the proton. I don't have the energy to even break that little tiny hydrogen bond. And it's not being held on there very tightly. I am exhausted. I can't break it. Therefore, we will never go through the third step. So in phosphoric acid, it will never donate all three protons because it begets too weak by after donating two. Same with phosphate ion as a polyprotic base. It will never gain three protons. It will only gain two because, again, it is too weak by the time it gets to the last step. So here is our rule. In general, polyprotic acids are weak acids whose reaction with water decrease with each step. So once it donates its first proton, its reaction will decrease and will less of it will react with water the next time. And it'll decrease again and less of it will react the next time. The reason we say polyprotic acids are weak acids is the only example we have on our acid chart that is not a weak acid is sulfuric acid. So I like to call that a special case. Now, we were able to talk about monoprotic and polyprotic for acids. These concepts also apply to bases. Now, I'm not going to go through as many examples, but I do want to show a couple. So, in a monoprotic base, an example A minus, these are bases that can react with water to produce an hydroxide ion. So, let's take the general case A minus. So, this is my monoprotic base it can gain one proton from water. So I'm going to draw water, and it can gain, bases can accept one proton. And what we'll assume is, let's assume this was a weak base. And so if it's a weak base, we're going to use our equilibrium arrow, less than 50%. And so when water donates an H, it becomes OH. It was neutral, so it gave away a positive. It's now going to become negative. So again, it's still, we're kind of like proving that it's a base. And when H joins with A minus or an H positive, we are going to make HA. 
I want to remind us that the cation always comes before the anion, anion when we write this out. Again, checking the charges, one minus on the right, one minus on the left. We are donating one proton, so my base is accepting one proton. That's the definition of a monoprotic base. Well, let's try an example here then. Let's do F minus fluoride ion. So this guy is a weak base. I know he's a weak base because when I check my acid chart, right, these are my acids in my first column. Here's their symbols. Over here, conjugate base. Here's the base formula. I will find F minus right here. The only time something is a strong base is down here if it's at the gray line. Unless it says hydroxide, it is not a strong base. So all most bases will be considered weak bases. So we're going to add water. Fluoride ion is going to accept a proton. And again, it's a weak base, so we're going to draw an equilibrium arrow less than 50%. We're going to have left hydroxide ion once water donates a proton. And we're going to have HF aqueous. Wonderful. Able to accept one proton. Well, that means the definition of a polyprotic base is a base that can accept two or more protons to form hydroxide ions. Again, let's use our general form of a base then in this example. A2 minus aqueous plus H2O. Again, let's assume this guy is a weak base, so we're going to use an equilibrium arrow. So I'm going to donate, and I like to show the donation of the proton. We're going to be left with OH minus plus HA. Remember, it was... 2 minus, when we add a positive, it's now going to be 1 minus. Again, floating around in my bucket of water. Still going to have water. But we're going to have each of these floating around. Well, this guy can accept another proton. So water is going to donate another proton. And again, if this guy was weak, it's going to be weak again. So we're going to be left with OH minus and accepts an H positive. This is now going to make H2A. It's going to perfectly balance. Again, one minus on the right, one minus on the left, three H's, three H's, one O, one O, one A, one A. It's going to balance. Perfect. Well, let's try this example, the example of PO4, 3 minus. Can you take a second, pause the video, and try writing out this example, please? Well, since this doesn't have a hydroxide in it, we know it's a weak acid. Donate a proton. And again, you can write less than 50% over top of these if you want. And ideally, this one would be significantly less than 50 because it goes down or it decreases as you accept the proton. So uh, this guy's going to be less. He's going to accept one, going to make OH minus and HPO4 2 minus. Again, 3 minus on the right, 3 minus on the left. Again, we're going to have more water floating around in this beaker. So this hydrogen phosphate ion is going to accept another proton. So it's weak acid again, equilibrium arrow. Going to make more hydroxide. And H2PO4, 1 minus. Again, 2 minus on the right, 2 minus on the left. Now, it's at this stage where I hope you realize, oh, wait, this guy will not carry down and add to more water. This is our special case. Remember I said anytime we have phosphoric acid as our polyprotic acid, 
or we have phosphate ion as our polyprotic base, the maximum it will go through is either two donations or two acceptances of a proton because by the time it gets down here, this base is so weak, this time when we throw him the ball, this guy can't even lift his arms to catch the ball. He has no energy left to catch the ball. Therefore, it will not go through a third reaction. Please, please, please never draw me the third reaction or I will have to mark it wrong for the phosphate ion or the phosphoric acid when we're dealing with an acid or a base. The rule for this is very similar to the rule we had for acids. In general, polyprotic bases are weak bases whose reaction with water decreases with each successive step.